Welcome to the Surfrace sponsored quick tip on adding new property columns to document libraries. Surfray is a leading provider of search enhancements for SharePoint and the producer of the Ontolica search and preview for SharePoint enhancement. For more quick tips, blog posts, information about search for SharePoint, and to download the Ontolica search and preview enhancement tool, please visit www.surfray.com. My name is Josh Noble and I'm co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search by A Press. Today I'll be showing you how to add a new column to document libraries so your users can start adding property values. As you'll see in our next quick tip, this information becomes vital to improving search efficiency with structured content. However, before you can use this data in search, you need to provide the users with a way to create it. So now I'm in a SharePoint 2010 demo environment. And to start, I'm going to jump to the document library that I've already created. And I can find that here on the left-hand side. And you'll see that I have the standard SharePoint uh, columns, such as file type, name, modified date, uh, all already entered here. If you have an interest in this column on the farthest right here for content type, uh, make sure to check out Robert Piddock's webinar on displaying custom result properties in SharePoint 2010. This webinar can be found at www.surfray.com under the resources tab along with the rest of our webinars. So at this point I want to add a new column. So to add the new column I'm going up here to the ribbon and I'm going to click on library and then assuming that I have the right permissions I'll see an option here for create column and I want to click on that and that brings up a, a new page here for this particular uh, to create a new column in this initial uh, example I want to provide something where somebody would be able to enter in uh, a free text field for whatever sort of property that they'd like uh, in this environment since I'm dealing with a company that sells dreams I want to provide people with a, a free text field for entering values for dream subject then I want to throw in a little description let's just call that the same and in this instance I'm happy with the rest of the values that are already entered in here and I'll just click OK and now I see a new column for dream subject so at this point users can start filling in uh, data for that to do so they're just going to edit the properties of that particular document and now we see a field for dream subject so let's say this is about sports so now we'll see that new property showed up here let's say I'll do another one about parties and we'll do a third one about food So at that point, uh, I now have properties that are that are tagged to these documents through this column. Now let's take this a, a bit of a, a more advanced step further. Let's say that instead of just creating something where somebody can enter in a free text field, I want to actually provide them with a fixed list of properties to choose from. And that's something that you might want to consider as you build out your SharePoint environment, because as you use as you create features such as search refiners that are using uh, managed properties providing a more structured list to those those features is sometimes more beneficial than providing a, a just general uh, random list that can start to get populated with very random bits of information as people start to free text fields uh, free text uh, information in there so here I'm going to create a new column and in this case now I want to do dream quality And instead of just entering a single line of text, I want to provide somebody with a choice. So here I'm going to change this radio button to choice. And we'll do another description. Now I can scroll down and I can find a field where I can actually enter in the different values. So let's say that we want to give them the ability to, do, to add great dreams, good dreams, 
Normal dreams, bad dreams, and horrible dreams. Not exactly sure why they'd want to sell horrible dreams, but we'll give that as an option. Then I can choose the way that somebody wants to pick that particular property. If I want to provide them a drop-down menu, uh, much like the way I had a drop-down menu before I edited the property of a document, I can provide that. I can provide them with radio buttons for a particular property, so just like you're seeing here. Or if I want to allow them to choose multiple properties, then I can give them a checkbox uh, so that they can choose multiple multiples there. Then I want to choose, do I want the property to auto-fill in? In this case, uh, no, I don't. And then I need to choose a default value for the property. In this case, I don't want to have a default value at all, but you might want to select a default value there. At this point, I'm happy with the rest of my properties. And I'll click OK. And now I have a new column for dream quality. And just like before, if my users want to add uh, values to that particular column, they can just edit the document or edit the properties. And now I have a drop down for dream quality. Let's say here uh, I want to choose great. So here I'm seeing the uh, previous field I created for subject. Now I have one for dream quality. And I'll click OK. And that new property shows up. So I guess we'll do uh, one more here. Let's do edit the property. And in this case, I didn't have a dream subject, and that's fine. I don't have to necessarily fill out every field there unless you've made that mandatory. And this will just be a normal dream. So at this point, I have values in there for uh, both dream subject and dream quality. Now, keep in mind, these are not yet available in search. These are available in your document libraries. And as we'll see in our next webinar on man uh, creating managed mapped properties, that's at the point where you would be able to turn this into something that you'll use in search. One other last thing that you might want to do in case you've created a column that you don't want, you might want to be able to delete them. So here we're going to go to, back up to the ribbon to library settings. And here I'll notice a list of the columns that I've created. I can click on one of those and either edit the column or I can delete it if I'd like to. And that's all there is to it. Uh, as you'll see in our other webinars on surfray.com, collecting meaningful properties about your content is vital to creating efficient search experiences in SharePoint. I should also mention again that uh, just because you've added the property to a document library doesn't mean that you can automatically use it in search. In our next quick tip on mapping managed properties, I'll show you how you can map these properties so that they can be used in search. Again, thanks for watching, and make sure to check out www.surfray.com for more quick tips, blog posts, information about search in SharePoint, and to download Ontolica Search and Preview for SharePoint.